Okay, guys. Uh, today I'm going to show to you uh, how can you install your IDMPR server using Ansible. Uh, <coughs> so my name is Ricardo Santana. I'm from Brazil. I am the co-founder uh, of Kenos. Uh, we have been working with uh, Compare, IDMPR, and Adempiere for the over uh, most of the uh, the 15 years, uh, <coughs> and my company also is the main developer of the localization Brazil. So uh, I'm not very active in the IDMPR core, but uh, we have a lot of working every day on localization Brazil. So let's start. <coughs> Uh, what is Ansible? Ansible is an open source software that can help you automate your infrastructure. So we decided to use it uh, a couple of years ago because uh, we had a lot of uh, work when trying to uh, install and maintain our, our servers, not only for IDMPR but for uh, all Linux servers. So we, <coughs> we started to uh, search for a solution that could help us uh, with this. So uh, we found uh, a lot of tools uh, on the internet like uh, Puppet, SaltStack, uh, Amazon uh, CloudFormation, and we decided uh, to choose uh, Ansible, uh, mostly because it is uh, really easy to, to read the, the playbooks. Uh, so when you are uh, maintaining your, uh, updating your code, it's really easy to, to read, uh, to new people to understand, because it uses uh, YAML files. So it's, it's very, 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 very easy to, to keep updated. Uh, it's also fast uh, and has a huge community. So every time you get an error, it's really easy to find the solution in the internet or in the Stack Overflow or even uh, in the ChatGPT. Uh, one characteristic of the Ansible is that it's agentless, so you don't have to install anything on the server. It's just connected via, via uh, SSH, uh, which is, for us, it was important at the time we chose that solution. Uh, I will dip a, a little bit in the technical side, so we can demonstrate how can you install your server. So the first thing I want to <coughs> talk here is about the YAML file. For those who are not familiar with YAML, there is an example <coughs> over there. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, human readable. So uh, it's easy to, to, to write. Uh, one tip I want to, to tell you guys is that you always have to use space for identification, do not try to use tabulation because YAML does not like tabulation at all. Uh, talking about Ansible, uh, we have the playbook, which is uh, a collection of tasks. So uh, we have to <coughs> create a file with every task you need to install the, the system. Uh, for example, uh, download the IDPR binary from the source forge is one task. Uh, uh, extract the files into a certain directory. So uh, uh, a playbook uh, has a collection of all these those tasks, the, 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 those tasks, and also the hosts that you are applying those tasks to. Uh, a whole is just a, a collection of uh, tasks also, uh, files, templates. So if you have a, a, a configuration file like 
uh, the Nginx uh, proxy or Apache proxy, reverse proxy configuration. You can put it as a template and the Ansible will uh, replace the variables uh, for each host that you are applying uh, those, those playbooks. Uh, and for last, the inventory file uh, is a file with all your hosts, IP addresses, port, uh, sometimes uh, the username <coughs> to SSH connection. So this, uh, with Ansible, there are a lot of more uh, features. I will just show the, the basics so we can uh, start from here and then we can improve uh, our uh, playbook script. Uh, some tips. Uh, Ansible is a focus on the state of the server. So uh, when possible, you should use the state uh, feature because uh, sometimes we focus on action, like uh, start the IDPR service. But in the Ansible, you should uh, think more like make sure that IDPR service is started or make sure this file exists. Or, uh, <coughs> the reason for that is because you can uh, run the same playbook over and over again so the Ansible checks the status of uh, the task you are trying to do. And if it, it sees that is already OK, he does nothing. So uh, it's a really great tool to not only to install the system, but also to keep it uh, updated. Because if <coughs> something changes, you can just uh, adjust your playbook and run it over again uh, to all your hosts, uh, like we did l last year, or 2021, when there is a sudo bug uh, on Linux. So we had to update like uh, 20 servers. Uh, I just created an uh, Ansible script, 15 lines of code maybe, and then applied to all servers at once in Took me no, no more than 10 minutes. Uh, as I told you, do not use tabulation in your YAML file. Uh, and make sure that your playbook can be replayed. So what that's me that, that means? Uh, some tasks, you have the state element. You can uh, put it present, absent, like, like it's there. But some tasks, you have to run um, a command from the shell. So uh, if you, your, your playbook needs uh, to run uh, a, a command, you have to make sure that if you run it again, will not break your server or your installation. OK. Uh, in Ansible, uh, there is uh, a website called Ansible Galaxy, which is a repository of uh, Ansible uh, roles, playbooks, <coughs> collections, so you can go to there and uh, uh, see a lot of uh, work done by the community. <coughs> I uploaded this uh, Ansible script to, to Ansible Galaxy as well. So if you go to there and search for IDMPR, you can uh, check the IDMPR installation script directly from the uh, Galaxy repository. Uh, here are a list of the most common uh, Ansible tasks that I use it in this playbook. Uh, the first one is to is the Ansible copy. It is used to copy a file from uh, uh, your local machine to the um, to the remote machine, like a configuration file, or maybe uh, you, you want to uh, uh, change your backup uh, script to save the 
uh, the dump with uh, uh, gzip instead of jar. So we can uh, create a file, put in there, and uh, the Ansible will copy it to the remote machine. Uh, the Ansible file is used to create files, directories. So <coughs> uh, this is good because uh, if you are using Ansible to install your server, you can uh, make it consistent. So uh, every server that you have in your company will have the same structure of files and folders. It's uh, way easier to to maintain it in long term. Uh, block in file, uh, it just put uh, multiple lines in a specific file, like uh, PJ 8BA file from Pro Postgres, for example. Uh, the line in the file, it uh, changes just one line in the file, like if you want to change it, I, I don't know, uh, uh, IDMPR env dot properties like uh, the Java memory. You could use uh, regex uh, regular expression to find the parameter you want to change, and then the value you you want to put in there. Uh, and for last, the Ansible package. It is. Uh, uh, Ansible command that uh, installs uh, packages from the uh, APT in, in case you are running in Debian systems or Yum or Pacman, uh, Yum for Red Hat and Pacman for uh, Arc Linux. So uh, instead of uh, Ansible, uh, also has uh, commands to to address directly to the distribution you, you are using, like uh, Ansible built-in APT, but I recommend you to use the package because it identifies what was your distribution and uh, run the property, uh, the property uh, common to, to distribution that you, you, your host, uh, your remote uh, machine is running, okay? So here is an example of uh, one Ansible uh, task. <coughs> uh, these tasks will create uh, two new folders. Uh, as you can see, uh, the first thing here is the name of the task. I, I always recommend that you use uh, the name. So uh, in the output, when you run your uh, playbook, you can see exactly what he's doing. Uh, so the co command, uh, the path, uh, I am using two variables. So uh, one is uh, where is the IDMPR home? And the second one is the item. Uh, the items are down here. So uh, I am creating, cr creating uh, two new folders under the data folder inside the data folder, which is one for storage, in case uh, I am using the file system storage provider in, in, in IDMPR, and the other one for uh, reports for uh, Jasper. So uh, in here are the other uh, parameters to the uh, file uh, command, like uh, this one is a uh, uh, that directory, uh, who is the owner in the group, in the Linux, in the permissions. Okay, uh, the last one uh, here is a conditional. So in this case, uh, doesn't make any sense to, to condition this, uh, this example to Debian only. I put it there, just uh, you can see how can you make uh, conditional uh, tasks in Ansible, okay? So I will <coughs> now uh, search uh, Ansible, uh, uh, IDMPR in the Ansible Galaxy, install IDMPR, uh, create an empty Docker container, 
with SSH support and run the playbook. All the commands I will use here, uh, I put in, in the link on the QR code if you want to replicate, okay? So here, uh, I am in the Ansible Galaxy repository. So uh, I, I uploaded the, the playbook here. And uh, here in, in README, you can see all the variables you can choose. Here are the default values. So I am ins installing the IDMPR. Uh, using uh, Java provided by Zulu, Postgres uh, version 15. And uh, those are the other parameters. Uh, I only support the Postgres installation. I, uh, at this time, is not uh, working with, uh, tested with Oracle installation. Okay. So uh, here in details <coughs> is the command I have to use to download my Ansible role to my machine. So I will open a new shell. <coughs> and paste here. OK. <coughs> Uh, he said that uh, this role is already installed in my, uh, my machine. So all I need to do is to run this, this role. Uh, May I ask a fast question? Yes? So in Ansible, there's two scenarios, mm -hmm. right? One where it goes out and does something for you, and then one where you actually download it onto the server and it modifies the server itself. In your case, your Ansible is installed locally on your machine, and you're about to go out and do something to a remote server. Yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I will do that in a remote server, but uh, in this case, I will launch a Docker container as the remote server, so we can connect it to this Docker container and uh, simulate that it's on Amazon or, or, or on your cloud uh, provider. So uh, here I created a, a Docker file. I will uh, put the container up. <coughs> so here uh, we can see that the container is running. And all I need to do is to uh, configure my inventory file. So I already done that. Uh, I created this inventory file and said this uh, Docker x86 is running on localhost in the uh, SSH part is 2201, as you can see here. Uh, this part on my machine is directing to the Docker container. Uh, and also I prepared uh, another uh, Docker container for ARM uh, machine, but today I, I brought my uh, PC, so <coughs> I'm not doing this uh, today. Uh <coughs> Uh, now I just need to run the playbook, okay? Here. Uh, <coughs> the, 
the command I'm using is uh, Ansible Playbook. Uh, the first parameter here is the key file. Uh, is the the SSH key to connect it to my machine. Uh, inventory is the inventory file. This file here. Uh, the playbook is the configuration what I want to install. And the last one, uh, this limit here is uh, telling Ansible to run just uh, on the Ubuntu Docker X86 uh, machine. Do not run in the IRM because it's not even launching. Okay, I am in the wrong folder. Okay, now <coughs> I can do it. So uh, now Ansible is doing uh, task by task, uh, and it, this may take a while uh, depending on the internet connection. I tested here before; it will take about two, three minutes. So. I'm going to, sh <coughs> going to show you the, uh, the playbook so I can explain what uh, Ansible is doing. So here is uh, my playbook. I am telling uh, Ansible to run on all hosts. I override this parameter because I use the limit uh, on the shell to just one host. This uh, uh, gather facts tells Ansible to uh, detect what uh, uh, machine is rerunning uh, in the remote host, like uh, which processor, which distribution, so we can uh, create uh, variables to uh, install uh, uh, depending on, the, uh, on, on those machines. In here, in holes, I chose uh, the one I uh, I downloaded from Ansible Galaxy, and also I am overriding uh, the Postgres version to 14. As you can see here in, in Ansible Galaxy, my default value is 15. So in this case, it will install uh, Postgres 14. Uh, I can do this override uh, here directly in, in playbook file or I can create a file for each host which is re recommended. Uh, you can also uh, encrypt those, those files. So if you are uh, putting a password in there, you can encrypt it. Uh, <coughs> and then when you run the Ansible playbook, you have either pass a key to open the file or uh, type a password. Okay. So <coughs> let's see. It's installing Java. I decide to use this project Java. I don't know if you are familiar with it, but uh, <coughs> What it, it does, uh, you, you can install Java from many uh, different uh, uh, types, like I am using Zulu, you can use uh, Adopti, OpenJDK, uh, Coreto, Amazon Coreto, you can choose uh, which provider you like. Uh, Okay, so now uh, let me show you uh, the playbook. Here. Uh, here are the tasks. Uh, the first thing uh, is what we look for uh, is the main uh, task. So the main task, I will set the variables. Uh, using this uh, common YAML file, which is found uh, down here. So it will install uh, those uh, commands, <coughs> like unzip, vi, uh, curl, 
if you want uh, more commands here, you just put, put in the, this common list. Uh, next, it will set the uh, variables for a specific distribution. <coughs> like I'm using Debian here. So those are uh, the Debian uh, specific packages. And Red Hat has uh, uh, maybe different names, so we can put it, it in here. Uh, after that, we are setting uh, variables uh, by the uh, architecture of your proce processor. So I created two files here. Uh, one for for x86. Uh, I put the, the binary in the uh, GitHub because of the performance. Uh, I was not. Uh, it was very very slow on the source forge, so it's the same binary f from the source forge. You can check by the checksum here. Uh, I just uploaded it to to GitHub. And uh, here uh, I <coughs> created the binary file to the IRM architecture. So I think this we should do this uh, from the last next, next release or so because uh, a lot of <coughs> companies are migrating from x86 to IRM because of the costs in the Amazon, the Graviton pro processor is 20-25% uh, percent, uh, cheaper than the regular ones. So this is something that you maybe we can do in, in the IDMPR release. Okay, and after uh, setting all variables, uh, Ansible will call uh, this prepare YAML, Java YAML, Postgres, only if the Postgres install variable is, is marked to true, and finally install the IDPM. So you can check uh, exactly what uh, he's doing here. So uh, install Java, uh, he will download from the Java project, as I said, I told you, set the Java home <coughs> in the bash RC file. Uh, Postgres, I use the recommended method from the Postgres website. So here is just for Debian, and here is just for Red Hat. <coughs> I do not use Red Hat in my company, I use uh, Ubuntu uh, or Debian, so I tested <coughs> both images, uh, IRM and x86, uh, for Debian, not for Red Hat. Uh, and here is the IDP installation. Uh, uh, the first thing the, to do is to download from the, the internet. Here I, I <coughs> make a security check to see if it's not uh, already installed. Then extract, move files, uh, everything you have to do in shell, uh, it's right here in this file. So <coughs> uh, delete the uh, uh, installation files like empty folders. Uh, create some uh, uh, variables here in, in your bash or C file, like I need your homes. Uh, create the, uh, the, the directories. Uh, set up I pair. Clean up those files. And the last thing is to synchronize database. Let's go back to show if, to see if it's Done. Okay, it's still download the IDPR uh, server.
put you down on it. I would like to extend <coughs> this uh, if, if you want. We are using <coughs> we, we are using Amazon. Idempier Pier is uh, Idempier in Amazon, and we are using Ansible too. And uh, what we are able, we are using uh, Tamer, which is the orchest orchestration tool over. And uh, we have play, uh, playbooks which able to build from scratch the full all servers, including HA proxy, REST API servers, schedulers. Uh, uh, we are connected to S3, uh, the, uh, data storage on uh, the web for VMS, for example. And this helps a lot, because if something happens, then theoretically we are able to reproduce the full infrastructure in 30 minutes. And uh, this using API too, so uh, you, ha you have support for Azure, Amazon, and many libraries uh, which can be, so it's, for me, it's not best, fit, but it is API-based uh, tool which you can automate the full infrastructure, very good thing. <coughs> yes, uh, <coughs> we can improve this, uh, this playbook. I created uh, it separated because uh, sometimes you want to use Apache instead of Nginx or so it's better to have uh, different playbooks for uh, each component. Uh, <coughs> so here I'm, I'm having a problem uh, downloading the uh, the file from GitHub. I just did that five minutes before I came here. But, uh, I don't think it's going to work. It's taking too long. I don't think it's going to work. Uh, so uh, after download, it will uh, run the console setup and uh, import the database. Uh, that's uh, <coughs> what uh, the script does. So maybe if you can try it later, maybe it, uh, it can be working again. It's the same thing when uh, Maven repositories goes down and we are unable to, to build a Maven, here is the same thing. Uh, that was not working, it takes too long, so. And for example, we are using, <coughs> because we are in Amazon infrastructure, yes. we are using, uh, Van Jenkins make the build, uh, the web, the code. The last step is copy to the our account, S3 account, and when the answer running inside Amazon, we download locally. So this takes maybe five seconds because the push platform is over the network. Yes, we, we also do that, but uh, since I uploaded <coughs> this to Expo Galaxy, it has to be in the public repository, you know, so everyone can, yes. can, can, can run it. Okay, I don't think I am going <coughs> to be able to show the, the rest of the script, to, the script to running. So if you guys have uh, any more questions. Hey. <coughs> this is really more of a comment or does it make sense? I think because it's a third party tool, it's platform agnostic, use it with Docker or LXD <coughs> or Amazon or Microsoft. Does it make sense to start taking these playbooks and start 
building it into our community more formally. I would, I, my preference is like if I, if I could go back in time, that's what I would have chosen. Oh, but I don't think it will really work with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. it, it, it works on the Windows too. Windows too? Yes. Okay. Both as the target as well as the host? Yes. Uh, I think if they, they communicate like this uh, solution, we could create a repository there, a DPS <coughs> GitHub, and I can uh, move this uh, playbook there, and then uh, see if I can help to create uh, Support for uh, maybe Windows or maybe uh, test the, the Red Hat. Hey Chuck, for example, when we provision the new server, play, playbook uh, provision new server and stuff, then we have a calculation and we identify how many, uh, which the size of the instance. And if the size is, let's say, 32 gigabytes, we automatically <coughs> calculate the Java heap size. Mm -hmm. And 